What happened to that Andy and Condor with both wings injured? What can a gesture of goodwill towards honey badgers lead to? And what will a rescued penguin chick choose? To stay with its new two-legged mom or venture into an unknown and dangerous world? You'll find out now. This is Smart Pizza. And in this episode, I'll show you touching stories of wild animals returning to their natural habitats. Let's start with an exciting video where kind people released tigers into the wild. For these cats, it was their first experience of carefreeness and freedom. Judging by their expressions, Amour tigers were eagerly anticipating this. They sat in cages, looked around, and were restless. As soon as the people opened the cage, none of the animals hesitated or lingered. They seemed to know exactly where to go. I hope these amazing creatures will never be in trouble again and will live the rest of their lives happily. The next wonderful story happened with an Andean condor. Although its ending is wonderful, beginning was unfortunate for the bird. The feathered creature lost control and crashed badly, injuring both its wings and couldn't flap them for a long time, making it unable to fly. To its great fortune, people from a nature protection center found the animal. They immediately took the Andean condor with them and registered it. They fed it daily, gave it water, and did everything to heal its wings and restore them to their former state. The rehabilitation took about a month and then it was time to release the bird into the sky again. Each center worker who took care of the condor was anxious. What if the bird wasn't ready? What if it couldn't fly, or worse, fell immediately after taking off? All kinds of thoughts crossed their minds, but fortunately, none of that happened. This proud and strong creature looked around a bit and soared into the sky. By the way, speaking of the Andean condor, did you know it's the largest flying bird in the Western Hemisphere and the heaviest among all well-flying birds? It lives, as the name suggests, in the Andes, and its diet mainly consists of carrion. It's said that in search of food, an Andean condor can fly unimaginable distances of up to 125 miles a day. This video doesn't have a long and beautiful story, but it remains no less spectacular. A resident of Oklahoma discovered many small turtles near his home in 2018, probably lost and with no plan for life since they were so young. The man wasn't afraid of the number of these creatures and took every single one home. He fed them, gave them water, nursed them back to health, and released them into the wild. For them, it was the first experience of life in the wild. While the man laid out the turtles like some sort of card game, they calmly waited for all their fellow turtles to be on the ground. I hope these turtles continue living side by side. Not only will their chances of survival increase, but many potential problems will automatically disappear. You can understand those turtles when you first see a clear and open horizon and realize that life is open before you, it's easy to get lost. You need time to look around and start making the right decisions. This applies not only to small creatures like those shelled ones, but also to great lions. This king of beasts was rescued from a circus. They say the animal never saw freedom. It was born under the big top and lived there all its life. But suddenly, this illegal entertainment was shut down. The animals were taken by nature protectors, and this lion was among the first sent to where it belonged, in the wild. Just look at this beautiful creature's reaction stands there, seemingly not believing its eyes. In any case, I'm sure it has a happy life ahead. The main thing is that the animal doesn't get completely confused and finds a suitable pride. Everything else will fall into place. When it comes to rescuing animals, kind people don't care who it is – a lion, a little turtle, or an adult and dangerous crocodile weighing more than a ton. As you guessed, the hero of this story is the last creature. A reptile from Sri Lanka tried to leave its rivers as the water was rising, and the predator thought staying there was dangerous. It tried to squeeze through the nearest canal but unfortunately got stuck. It's unclear how long the predator remained in that position, but by the time people found it, its strength was almost gone. It was necessary to evacuate it quickly and send it to a rehabilitation center, which the people did. There, the crocodile was restored and successfully placed on a cargo vehicle that delivered it back to its native river. This journey will likely impact the predator's behavior, making it realize that its panic and attempt to leave its home was unnecessary. No matter what animal we're talking about, the fact remains, saying goodbye to those who helped you is always incredibly difficult. 
Take a look at this cute penguin. At one point, it was on the brink of life and death, just like many other young seabirds facing starvation due to the La Nina climate phenomenon. This involves the ocean water cooling below average temperatures due to stronger than usual easterly trade winds. If a creature like this penguin doesn't have parents, the food issue can't be solved, and you can predict the outcome. Moreover, the challenges for the little one didn't end there. According to the center's workers, this blue penguin chick was injured while trying to free itself from a fishing net. Partly because of this, people found and took it with them to provide all the necessary first aid. Later, they realized that first aid alone wasn't enough. They had to keep the penguin for a couple of weeks. In fact, this little one grew up in the arms of the girl you saw at the beginning of the video. So the moment she released it was particularly touching. The penguin looked towards freedom, but at the same time, didn't want to part with the friend who saved its life. Nevertheless, the wild, and the sea in particular, called to the penguin, and it turned around and ran towards adventure. I'm sure it was the right decision. I hope the penguin quickly finds a new family and lives a long and happy life. What do you know about honey badgers? No, I'm not talking about people who love honey. I'm talking about animals with that name. Yes, these beauties from the weasel family also love honey, but they're primarily known for something else. They live in Africa and Asia and are well known for their fierceness and fearlessness, despite their relatively small size. The Guinness Book of World Records, for example, declared the honey badger the world's most fearless mammal in its 2000s editions. And where there's fearlessness, there's hunting for other animals. The honey badger is a predator whose prey includes various rodents, hedgehogs, and young individuals of larger species like antelopes or foxes. They also enjoy birds and their eggs, some reptiles like small crocodiles and snakes, as well as scorpions and invertebrates. In short, their diet is rich in various components. Our fearless friend doesn't deny itself anything. Honey badgers consume relatively little plant food compared to other weasel species, eating berries, fruits, roots, and tubers. And of course, there's the love for honey, which gave our guests their name. However, the most interesting thing, in my opinion, is the honey badger's reaction to snake toxins, especially cobras. When a snake bites our guest, it goes into convulsions and dies, or so it seems. About two hours later, the animal comes back to life and returns to normal. Despite scientists' efforts to explain this phenomenon, they haven't succeeded. But back to our story. Even such cool and confident animals sometimes find themselves in trouble and need help. Humans, as one of the forest's primary caretakers, quickly find them and take them to a help center. There they restore them and release them back into the wild. Usually, animals thank the humans, even if they view us with some contempt or caution. But that's not in the honey badger style. It couldn't simply run into freedom. It had to show it wasn't afraid of us. One of the honey badgers attacked a person who lingered near their cage, frightening him a bit, and ran after its favorite buddy. Honey badgers are truly amazing creatures, aren't they? If any of you decide to start helping animals and want to have as many saved lives on your record as possible, here's a life hack. Find pigeons, put them in your barn, help them recover, and then release them. It'll look impressive, and you'll save dozens of animals at once. The people in the next video released a real bobcat into the wild for the first time. These cats are considered to adapt well to their surroundings. They prefer deciduous, coniferous, or mixed forests, although they can live elsewhere. These predators are crepuscular and hunt until midnight. Every night, an average bobcat travels 1.8 to 6.8 miles along its usual route. However, their behavior can change depending on the season. For instance, bobcats become day hunters in the fall and winter when their prey is more active in sunlight. Their primary food includes American rabbits, snakes, mice, rats, and porcupines. Sometimes the bobcat attacks birds, white-tailed deer, and even domestic animals. However, our guest in the video was clearly not ready for that. The bobcat needed to orient itself in its new environment. Its mother disappeared, and kind people found the little one all alone. They took it, healed it, and returned it to its natural environment. Surprisingly, the cat didn't dash away the moment its cage opened. It behaved wisely and cautiously, came out, analyzed the area, ensured no one was watching, and wouldn't harm it. 
I'm sure even though this is a new home for the bobcat, it will quickly adapt and become an excellent predator like all similar individuals. But the leopards in this rescue story decided not to delay their pleasure. As soon as the cage opened before their predatory faces, they dashed to freedom without hesitation and disappeared into the bushes. Perhaps it helped that there were two of them, with support and insurance in the form of a sibling, so they weren't afraid. What do you think? Could this have influenced them? Write in the comments. And also write there what name you would give this adorable kitten whose photo was sent to me by a subscriber. The man found this bundle of joy by the roadside and took it with him at the first opportunity. Such a miracle shouldn't remain alone in such a dangerous environment. By the way, it's a girl. The following video came to us from the Republic of Congo. People saved one of the hundreds of small chimpanzees needing help. The primate grew right before the eyes of nature protectors. They taught it to walk, helped it eat correctly, and used the tools surrounding the monkey. In short, the caretakers acted as full-fledged parents. It's impossible not to fall in love with such contact. Moreover, this is a chimpanzee, one of the closest animals to humans based on DNA. We share about 94% of our DNA with it. Even without research, it's evident that these apes are much like us. For example, they have very developed social behavior, and there's a strict hierarchy within their groups. When pursued, they climb trees, making sounds similar to barking. Chimpanzees can also mimic the actions of other monkeys higher in their hierarchy. They can imitate stronger and more respected relatives. Female chimpanzees also have a hierarchy within their group controlled by a female individual. In some female communities, the status of a high-ranking mother can be passed down to the daughter. It's no surprise that when people said goodbye to such an intelligent and resourceful creature, they felt the warmest and tenderest feelings, as if they were sending their only child into the wild. Who said that only humans can release others into the wild? Dogs, by the way, are quite intelligent creatures capable of doing this. The main heroine of this funny video was 10 years old at the time of filming and was considered the main dog of the house. Of course, Sophia, as she's called, enjoys certain privileges. For instance, the owner allows her to roam the rooms even in her absence. The younger ones must sit quietly in their cages and not make noise. So one day, Sophia wanted to show her friends what complete freedom was and opened their cages. It's a pity we didn't see what happened next. Did they run after their rescuer and throw a party? Or were they afraid of the owner who promised to return home soon? When animals want freedom, they won't wait for an invitation. They'll do everything they can to get the long-awaited carte blanche. In other words, they'll act like the dog in this video. It wanted to get outside so much that it started making funny jumps to amuse its owners so they'd take it out. And why not? It's a practical and easy way to get free. If any dogs are watching this video, take note. And this video shows us how a bear reacted to its first taste of freedom. At the time of release, the bear was only three years old. The grizzly got trapped by hunters and was in an unenviable position, needing urgent help, which fortunately arrived. Kind people strolling through the forest spotted the bear and called the rescue service. They came, took it with them, healed it, and as we see, released it back into its native forest. Judging by the animal's reaction, it was delighted, though slightly confused about what had just happened. Anyway, all's well that ends well. Now let me tell you about incredible animal stories captured on camera. And now a riddle. We can see a pond, fishing, nothing unusual. What kind of animal do you think will suddenly appear? Maybe an alligator? Or some kind of large herbivore? Well, look. Someone bites on one of the rods, the man pulls out a fish. No sooner had it happened than a cat snatches it up. The cutie was nearby all the way, waiting for the right moment. As far as I'm concerned, he did everything very professionally. I don't even want to scold him. You've probably heard that animals can fall from the sky. This usually means a rain of animals such as worms, fish, or frogs. Sometimes animals fall from the sky without a rain. It was like this. It was very unexpected. Something fell from the sky into the flower bed, and it soon became clear that it was a possum. Where did it fall from? There's nothing up there. Maybe it's Manny from the Ice Age who launched it like he did in the cartoon. What's about to happen is something you certainly don't expect. 
we see an ordinary sandbank and something light colored on it. Those are shells. Nothing unusual so far. But lo and behold, there are more of them. And it turns out there was a whole army of these creatures right under our feet. And that's not the only time this has happened. We again see the beach and a few shells, but gradually they increase in number. New shells appear from under the sand, and the whole sandbank is literally dotted with these shells. Although it looks epic, the shots are scary at the same time. Now I don't really want to go to the beach. What, aren't you afraid of those creepy seashells? Do you still want to go to the beach to swim? Well, then I'll tell you that there's something else scary besides seashells. You'll see now with this dog as an example. He's calmly swimming along when suddenly something creepy starts paddling. The dog didn't get sucked into this vortex. He was able to turn around and swim back to shore. But what was it? Some kind of underwater monster? A lot of people would think so, but it's actually manatees. It's their style to suddenly let their location known. A pack of manatees can start floundering in the water and make waves. That's how they react to someone's presence. At the same time, these creatures are not dangerous. It's a paradox. Firstly, they feed only on aquatic vegetation. And secondly, their teeth are far away from biting someone. The only thing they can do is to scare you. And that's not on purpose. In general, they're cute, attached to people, and can even swim to their call. But what's really dangerous is the crocodile. The author of this video is about to meet this toothy creature. However, he didn't expect what happened. He thought that the crocodile would be lying in or near the water, but the predator came out of the thicket. What was the crocodile doing there? After all, these animals usually don't wander through the forests. In general, they rarely move away from their favorite water reservoir. What was this crocodile doing? Do you have any ideas? Can you say that a crocodile is good at camouflaging? Probably. At least it's not uncommon that we can't see it when it's hiding in the water. The animal we talk about next has even better camouflage. Don't know what it is yet? Here it is. It's an octopus, the main disguiser in the underwater world. In this case, the mollusk has masterfully disguised itself as a coral reef, so you can only see it up close. Therefore, octopuses can avoid encounters with predators or, on the contrary, lurk in ambush and attack their prey. And some octopuses can literally reincarnate into other animals and even different objects in the ocean. Anyway, that's another story. Do you remember those shells that suddenly appear on the beach? Well, I've got another phobia for you. To experience it, you don't even have to leave the house. It's enough to go to the toilet because you may find a snake. I'll tell you right away that this video was shot not in Australia, the main habitat of crawlers on the planet, but in Thailand. Fortunately, the snake was spotted in time. It was contained before wildlife officers arrived. In the end, they removed the reptile. For that matter, it's not safe in the house in general. Anything can happen at any moment. An animal can come out of nowhere and literally fly into your house. Like this. Imagine how frightened the residents of this house were when a deer came to visit. He broke the transparent door and ended up in the living room. Then the deer lay down in the middle of the room for a while. Following that, the animal tried to get out. Apparently, it injured its legs a bit when flying into the house. Anyway, as far as we know, this intruder is fine. Now we're in a restaurant. Who do you think's gonna show up? Maybe a snake will fall from the ceiling or a bear running in. Well, it's simpler than that. We're about to see the deer again. This time, the appearance was more epic. The animal blew out the window right next to the customer table. Apparently, the deer was so hungry that it decided not to read the menu. The animal ran straight to the kitchen to cook something itself. Seriously, everything worked out fine. Soon, the deer left the restaurant through the back door. It's just not known what made it fly into the restaurant through the window so quickly. It remains a mystery. Such unexpected appearances of animals are frightening. However, people themselves can scare animals by doing something sudden. That appears to be the case. Workers were cutting down trees near houses. It's a normal procedure, nothing complicated or special, except for this raccoon. All this time, it's hiding on the tree when suddenly the animal had to leave. I don't think anyone expected that. How about golf now? 
golf courses are not only where the games are played, you can also come across all sorts of animals there, mostly birds or alligators, but that's a first. A moose ran onto the course. Anyway, that's for a short time. The animal just had to wade to the other bank. The moose successfully coped with it and didn't linger so as to not disturb the players. However, that's not always the case. Here we can see another moose that decided to draw attention. The moose interrupted the game for a while, majestically ran across the field and disappeared into the woods. So are there any really cheeky moose? Of course there are. This moose is much more determined. Look at it chasing the golfer. I had to forget about golf for a while to avoid getting hit by this tenacious animal. Or maybe the moose just wanted to join and asked for the right club. When you watch this video, you think you know what's going to happen. A bear is probably about to jump out of the bushes and try to attack the biker. Not at all. The bear was replaced by a sheep. In this case, not a usual one. First, it blocked the road and showed the passage was closed. It butted the bike to the extent that the biker fell down. The guy had to fight against the ram with his bare hands to continue his way. However, the ram was too stubborn. It forced the guy out of his territory and he had to ride back to find a way around. Well, at least you could expect a ram to attack. After all, these animals aren't the most patient or cute. But what about the koala? The tourists in this video stumbled upon it accidentally. They didn't even think something serious would happen. Everyone had already started to smile at this animal. But the koala was not that ordinary. It tried to attack the tourists and shooed them away. Unlike that ram, it didn't stand its ground until the end and eventually ran away somewhere. Now I'll tell you about the lizards that will be able to appear even with a buffalo. When we talk about lizards, we usually have an image in our mind of a small lizard just crawling around somewhere seemingly posing no threat to humans, let alone large animals. But lizards come in many forms, and one of them is the Komodo dragon, also known as the Komodo monitor. It's a real monster, a huge killer and the largest lizard in existence. The Komodo dragon can be more than 13 feet long, weighing over 280 pounds. Average individuals are smaller, but they're also astonishing in terms of size. In the wild, this dragon lives only in Indonesia on local islands, although it used to live in Australia. Australians and their animals can heave a sigh of relief because I wouldn't wish anyone to share their land with such a dangerous and huge creature. The Komodo dragon not only has impressive size but also incredible strength. This applies to the power of its jaws as well. And with a single blow of its armored tail, this lizard is able to break limbs, knock an opponent out, or even finish it. All animals in Indonesia are afraid of this lizard because the Komodo dragon is a top predator. This means that no one hunts it, but the monitor lizard itself can attack and eat anyone and especially likes large prey. Buffaloes, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, are some of its favorite delicacies. Yes, they're not African buffaloes, which are the biggest in the world, but local Asian water buffaloes are not small either. The monitor lizard eats buffalo calves without much difficulty. The lizard attacks a baby, bites it, and often swallows it whole. By the way, the Komodo dragon just loves to swallow its prey whole. It's its signature technique, something like fatality. The situation is more complicated with adults, but everything is solvable. As an option, a Komodo dragon can attack from behind and bite a leg of a clumsy buffalo, or it can bite a buffalo's torso during a fight. Sometimes a single bite is enough, after which the lizard waits. The fact is that the Komodo dragon is venomous. Venomous glands are contained in its mouth, so the reptile gives its prey a toxin through a bite. Gradually, inflammatory processes begin to occur in the body of the buffalo. It becomes weak, and the monitor lizard calmly kills it and eats it. After the bite, it can go about its business. The Komodo dragon has a very keen sense of smell, so it easily finds its dying prey by smell. And if the lizard doesn't want to wait, it can try to defeat the buffalo right on the spot. However, this usually requires at least a couple of monitor lizards. It's not easy for one to quickly defeat such a large opponent. Local buffaloes know about the power of Komodo dragons, so they prefer not to mess with them. When they don't want to spend a lot of energy on hunting, they may choose something simpler as their prey. For example, local goats or deer. They're much easier to bite through than an Asian water buffalo, but these ungulates are much more agile than the bulls. But that's no problem, the lizard is no slouch. Despite its armored appearance, it's distinguished by its great speed. 
Komodo dragons develop speeds up to 12 miles per hour and pounce sharply on their prey, so they catch up with goats and deer and neutralize them without much difficulty. And then everything is according to the plan. Capture, venomous bite, and massacre. Not only wild animals suffer from these lizards, but also livestock, horses and pigs, for example. In terms of difficulty level for the Komodo dragon, it's about the same as baby goats or fawns. In general, hunting will be easy because the size of many local pigs is small. Komodo dragons often swallow them whole as, in fact, many of their other preys. Monkeys can be among the preys. There are many of them in Southeast Asia, enough for all the monitor lizards. For these giant reptiles, local monkeys are just a snack. To hunt them, Komodo monsters do not spend much effort to hunt them, but they almost always swallow them whole and quickly. This is something like chips for the monitor lizard. The Komodo lizard doesn't mind competing with reptiles. Competing is the right word since they're the only creatures that can at least stand up to this armored dragon. Take tortoises, for example. Komodo dragons eat them too, but the hunt is not always successful. Komodo dragons can't always bite a tortoise shell in half, which saves the poor creatures. However, sometimes the lizards succeed. Another opponent of the Komodo dragon is a snake. The Komodo dragon eats small snakes without any problem, but it prefers not to mess with large ones. It's not interested in them, and it itself realizes that they can be dangerous. Messing with venomous king cobras is not the best idea, even for the Komodo dragon. However, conflicts between them sometimes happen, and the lizard usually comes out the winner, just because of its size. Finally, Komodo dragons can fight with crocodiles. These are probably the only animals at all that can pose a real threat to the monitor lizard. Therefore, if a monitor lizard chooses a crocodile for dinner, it chooses small individuals. In short, the Komodo dragon is dangerous to everyone. Let's not forget about us. Because of its aggression, size, and venomous abilities, the Komodo dragon is a threat to humans. Sometimes these reptiles attack humans and, unfortunately, some attacks end tragically. But this usually happens in the middle of nowhere. Komodo dragons are one of the main living attractions in Indonesia, and there are quite a few tourist areas with these animals. The staff here feed them regularly to suppress aggression and anger in them. Therefore, in tourist areas, Komodo dragons are safe and do not attack anyone. The main thing is not to pester them. It must be said that people not only admire Komodo dragons, but also pose a threat to them. Due to human economic activity, extermination of the prey is habitual for the monitor lizards, as well as poaching. There are fewer and fewer Komodo dragons left in the world, and the species is already considered endangered. It turns out, in addition to large crocodiles, these reptiles have one more enemy. That's us. Actually, there's one more, and that is the Komodo dragon. Yes, you've seen some footage today of the monitor lizards hunting together, but that doesn't mean they're all close friends ready to stand up for each other. They're more likely to be ready to eat each other. Cannibalism is common among these animals, as if they don't have enough other animals that live together with them on the same territory. When they can't find food, and this sometimes happens, the larger animals can eat their smaller congeners. Komodo dragons eat young and small monitor lizards, and they do it quite often. Scientists have estimated that they can make up almost 10% of the total diet. Komodo dragons are so ruthless that not only are they feared by their own small congeners, but even their own babies are afraid of them. As soon as they hatch, they immediately run away from their mother and hide in the nearest trees so the parents don't eat them. <laughs> they spend the first couple of years of their lives running and hiding in the crowns of trees where they're out of the reach of adults. Komodo dragons are interesting not only because they attack and eat everything, I have something else to tell you about them. Keep watching to find out some more interesting facts about the largest lizards on the planet. Reproduction Komodo dragons are solitary creatures. They interact with each other only when feeding or when mating. As for mating, they have a classical mating which takes place in winter during the dry season. After that, the female searches for a place to lay its eggs. But things can be different. Komodo dragons can also reproduce asexually. This process is called parthenogenesis. What does this mean? It means that if there are no males, females can still lay a viable clutch of unfertilized eggs. In this case, all the babies will be males. But why do Komodo dragons need such a feature in the first place? Scientists believe it may have something to do with the isolation of their habitat. 
This allows them to establish new colonies if, as a result of a storm, females without males are thrown to neighboring islands. Did you know that the Komodo dragon inspired one man to create one of the most famous monsters in cinematic history? Who do you think I'm talking about? Personally, I'd immediately think of Godzilla. There are similarities between the two. But it turns out that the Komodo dragon helped create King Kong. A friend of Marion C. Cooper, the director who created King Kong and made the iconic 1933 movie of the same name, visited the island of Komodo and wrote a book about it in which he called the Komodo dragons the Kings of Komodo. Under the influence of the book, Cooper thought that it would be interesting to catch a real gorilla in the Congo and make it fight with a Komodo dragon. Later, the idea was transformed into a battle between King Kong, the giant gorilla, and a T-Rex. Today, I've told you a lot about how Komodo dragons are frightening, cruel, ruthless, aggressive, large, and so on. It's hard not to call these lizards real monsters. But as it sometimes happens, every monster has a bright side, and the Komodo dragon is no exception. These lizards are very curious and playful, just like domestic cats. Captive individuals play with shovels, shoes, frisbees, balls, buckets, and bags. They also play tug-of-war with humans. The way the monitor lizards interact with objects has no aggression or food motivation and therefore can be considered a game. And some people consider Komodo dragons to be cute creatures and even have them as exotic pets. Well, that's their business, but I would certainly not risk taking in the creature that made the world see King Kong. While on the subject of the unexpected animal appearance, I'll tell you about the most sudden meetings with snakes captured on camera. I'll have two burgers. They say that snakes can only be found in a terrarium or among the grass somewhere in the wild, but this is not the case. The people in this clip had just stopped in for a snack at the nearest fast food place and a serious surprise was waiting for them inside the building. A man was standing with a giant snake on him. It felt like it was his mascot or protector. While he was sorting out the order, the creeping creature looked around and didn't let anyone near him. This was the case when you definitely don't want to get ahead bypassing the queue. Bring the Oscar On the other hand, snakes are very intelligent creatures. It's unlikely that the snake from the previous clip would have thought to lunge at a human. It was probably full, and it's so big that it wouldn't be able to jump at lightning speed. Besides, like I said, snakes understand everything. Take a look at how snakes can behave to evade danger and appear safe to potential threats. They just pretend to be dead. And they do it in an incredibly effective and beautiful way. I believed it even through the screen. What if it's not what we think it is, but a super accurate punch by a human? I mean, there are martial artists who know all the points on the body and are skilled at using them. They don't hit like boxers, but gently touch this or that place and the result of their method is amazing. Actually, no, you know, apparently the man from the previous video was not some kind of martial artist. He was just dealing with another sham, just like in this video. Here another snake is acting extremely playful and cute while pretending to be dead. I wonder why they do that. As far as I understand, these predators are tame. I mean, they've been kept in a domestic environment since birth. They'd have to be used to humans, wouldn't they? Or is it a game? Share your thoughts on this matter in the comments. Aerobics together In general, tame snakes live very well, as I see. They constantly eat well, they're never sad, they're stroked, they're given a massage, they're even taken to jump on a trampoline. But wait, it wasn't according to plan at all. The man, it turns out, has no snakes in the house. In this case, his reaction is natural and understandable. I wonder if the snake was offended at that moment that he no longer wants to jump on the trampoline with it. Hide and seek What are the odds of beating snakes at hide and seek? These sneaky creatures can crawl literally anywhere they want. For example, under the radiator enclosure of the nearest car. Imagine the face of a driver who sees a rather large snake slithering out of his car. What if its congeners are still inside? What if the snake laid eggs there? I wouldn't like to see a person in this situation who constantly overthinks it, so one can go crazy. I just lost my appetite. It happens that appliances in the kitchen break down. 
The most unpleasant thing is when you have already planned to cook dinner in the oven and it broke down at the most inappropriate moment. But don't worry, just call a master who will inspect your oven and extract a snake from it. Maybe it was the problem. Yeah, I agree, it sounds crazy, but it's happened to these people, so it's not staging or fake. Seriously, I have no idea how the snake got in there. It's incredibly hot in there, and there's nothing edible. It got all tangled up in the wires, and now it's asking people to get it out. That's what it's called. Waiting is the best tactic. I don't know anything cooler and more effective than waiting for the target to come to you. It works especially well when the potential prey doesn't even suspect that at that moment it's in danger. For example, if we talk about a human, when they put on their shoes, they hardly think about something bad, right? As it turns out, it's this very moment they can get into a difficult situation. It'll be impossible to get out of such a situation without a couple of snake bites, because it can be hidden in a sneaker. I wonder if the snake got there on purpose to hunt the man, or was it just scared and got into a place where it would be quieter? Staring Contest Okay, now it's time for a little staring contest. It's interaction, so to speak. Choose a snake and have a staring contest with it to see who's better. But seriously, why do you think snakes behave this way? Are they really looking for something in the distance, or are they waiting for someone? I mean, they immediately got out into the fresh air with the whole family and froze, as if waiting for a miracle. Share your versions of why the reptiles behave this way. Also, write in the comments, which moment scared you the most? Thank you for watching, and see you later.